All right, folks, this one is all about chemical sedimentary rocks. So unlike plastic chemical sedimentary rocks, uh, chemical sedimentary rocks are, are, you know, we have those dissolved ions that, that we get from chemical weathering. They're weathered, they're eroded uh, and transported in water from their source. Uh, and then they precipitate out of solution to form new mineral grains. This can be done... Uh, organically by these these tiny little uh, uh, um, single cell organisms here often called uh, or a lot of them are called foraminifera these are all different little shells right that they make these single cell organisms and these are their their little feeders that they stick out and and, and and gather up right but they make their shells out of calcite calcium carbonate so they fix the, the calcium and the carbonate ions out of solution to make their shells. This can be done inorganically too by supersaturation. So if you put way too much calcite, you know, and calcium and carbonate in a uh, in a, uh, a thing of water, um, it'll start to you know uh, uh, precipitate out uh, at the bottom. This can be done. You know, if you, you take a glass of water, put a whole bunch of salt in it, it, can take no more salt, and then you continue to pour salt in it. That salt will dissolve. But new crystals of salt will form and, and, and precipitate out at the bottom of that because it can take no more salt. So we can precipitate these out of solution either organically or inorganically. Right. So some rocks formed by these chemical reactions, right? We have, we have rock salt formed in evaporative settings. Uh, this travertine or limestone is formed in kind of uh, um, waterfall or cave settings. Limestone found with fossils in it. These can be clues to environment, right? Maybe this was a coral reef, right? Or even this, this stuff called coal here, right? From peat swamps, bogs, marshes, dead squished organic plant matter. Again, it's not going to be a mineral, uh, but we are going to call it a rock. Looking at how we classify these, these chemical sedimentary rocks, right? We can look at the ones in green here. These are all made out of calcium carbonate or, or, or calcium magnesium carbonate. These will all fizz in acid and be softer than, um, than a, a, a glass, right? We also have uh, microcrystalline quartz or SiO2 that can be uh, deposited as chert. This probably happens due to microscopic organisms as well. We can get rock salt. This is very important to us around here in Grand Rapids, or uh, I'm sorry, over by Detroit. There's one of the largest chip, uh, salt mines in the world uh, is a mile underneath uh, Lake Huron over by Detroit. Uh, we have rock gypsum made of the, you know, mineral gypsum. Uh, and this was a, a big industrial mineral important to us here in Grand Rapids. Furniture was big in early Grand Rapids, but so was gypsum, right? We use gypsum for uh, plaster of Paris, whitewash, and mainly now uh, drywall. And then we have this stuff at the bottom, right? These aren't minerals, but they're just plant detritus. We have peat, uh, and then we have coal, right? So these are, are often called our organics as well. Uh, the coal is often called an organic because it's made of dead, squished organic material. Taking a look at some of these here. First, we have fossiliferous limestone. Take a look at all these happy little fossils. You can see seashells and little bryozoans and all sorts of fun things in here, all right? Indicating possibly, you know, coral reef or, or nearshore marine environments. Right? We also have this interesting one down here, which is made of almost entirely, you know, cemented together seashells. It's very porous. Water will pour almost right through it. This one has a very specific name. It's called coquina, C-O-Q-U-I-N-A, coquina. And then we have crystalline limestone. Limestone can be deposited uh, inorganically as well. So if it's just being precipitated out from supersaturation, you'll get a solid chunk. Again, it will still be made of calcium carbonate, so it'll be softer than glass, and it will uh, fizz in acid. Chalk is another one, often sometimes called a biochemical, uh, made of the dead little seashells of, of you know, the, all those microscopic organisms. So when you're writing on the sidewalk with chalk, you really are writing with the skeletons of little dead and died marine critters, right? Here's the, the, the great chalk cliffs over in Dover. Once again, this stuff will feel like crazy because it's calcium carbonate. Dolomite or dolostone. Uh, this is limestone, essentially, where some magnesium or some calcium in the limestone has been replaced with magnesium. Makes it a little bit harder of a rock, a little bit less susceptible to 
acid in the environment. It doesn't uh, fizz quite as readily. And then we have chert, chalcedony, flint, jasper, agate. These are all the same thing. They're just different colors, varieties thereof. This is all microcrystalline quartz, and we believe these probably come from these little single cell organisms here called radiolaria, which unlike the forams, these radiolaria make their little shells uh, or tests, that we call them, out of uh, 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 quartz or silica, SiO2. Those guys get squished together and they form uh, chert. This has been long used as, uh, you know, um, tools uh, to create, you know, stone tools and implements like that. Some other chemical sedimentary rocks. Here's rock gypsum. Comes in a variety of forms. Uh, the gypsum mines here in Grand Rapids are closed now. They're all underground. Now we mine them in these big, giant, open pit mines. Much cheaper to mine something above ground. Right? And here's rock salt. Right. So uh, again, Detroit has one of the biggest uh, salt mines in the world. Uh, here's the, the beautiful, you know, pink Himalayan rock salt uh, that you can, uh, you know, put on your food. Tastes delicious. Right. Again, sodium chloride, NaCl, right? And here is coal. I know you folks all recognize this from uh, your uh, stockings at Christmas. Uh, coal, is coal a mineral? No, coal is not a mineral. Why? No organic structure, or it's organic, right? All CH bonds uh, that has no defined chemical composition, blah, blah, blah. So it's not a mineral, but it is a rock. And as you can see, it's just dead squished organic, usually plant matter, sometimes critter matter as well as we see from the seashell. In this little chunk of coal. Right. Now, one of the things about coal, right, we use this as a as an energy source. What I'm showing you here is is an example of strip mining that's kind of been taken to the extreme. This is mountaintop removal. This happens a lot in the Appalachian coal mines. So coal is deposited as a sedimentary layer horizontally, right? So if you want to extract this horizontal layer of coal, you have to mine horizontally. So what they'll do is just blast away the entire mountain until they get down to their layer of coal and mine it. Right? Very environmental and destructive, very terrible looking stuff. Right? Next time we'll talk about some things to take notice of in sedimentary 